Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Craig Rosevear. Welcome to Access All Ages, which is your opportunity for the backstage path to the property scene, the real estate market. And with me is my trusted colleague from Capital Property Newcastle, real estate analyst, Tom Haig. G'day, Tom. Great to be here, Craig. Thanks for having me. And superstar agent, Sveta from Sveta Properties. Sveta, great to have you on the show. Hello. How are you going? Thanks, guys. We are fantastic, and I'll tell you what, the sun is out and it's a beautiful day outside. Um, just recently, they've lifted the well, New South Wales government has lifted the bans on on-site property auctions as well as open for inspections, and we're just feeling a sense of optimism out there in the property market. Um, what are you seeing right there now? So tell us a little bit first about um, what you do and where you do it. Yeah, for sure. I, well, obviously, I'm the Spetter Properties with the agents in Newcastle. Um, and our actual office here is in, in the hub of Katara, opposite Westfield, um, which is a very handy, convenient location for myself. <laughs> um, I actually do do a lot of work around here, around the whole 289 um, suburb, but obviously we do work in other areas. Um, and we do both sales and property management here as well, guys. Um, and we've just gone through a major um, office fit out refurbishment here and um yeah, looking so very nice too i must say thank you thank you it's not finished yet um but yeah we're about three quarters there well, that's fantastic. Um, the 2289 is somewhere you know and love so much. In fact, you've even got 2289 on the number plates of your car, is that right? <laughs> but as, as your, as your um, success has grown, you've also moved into uh, other Blue Room postcodes such as Merriweather, New Lambton. So as you said, that's that's what, you live in the 2289. You know, like the back of your hand, but you've also, you know, got such a, a deep understanding of those neighbouring suburbs. Absolutely, guys. And that's a beautiful thing about Newcastle. Everywhere is just absolute, um, it's just all close proximity. It really is. And um, we're just lucky. Things are like five, seven minutes away. And, and yeah. being especially situated here, I find that, um, yeah, absolutely true. We're in a great spot, just pop across to Westfield for some shopping or a spot of lunch. And um, yeah, I, I've seen your, your offices uh, look fantastic. You've just done the, the upgrade there. So really good. I think you used your time well uh, while this uh, COVID-19 was happening and yeah. just timed it right. So as the market yeah. is re-emerging, <laughs> um, you're, well, you're ready to go. That's very, very true. Like with the whole COVID thing, I know it's a really – obviously it's been a really rough time – but in one respect here, when it came to the whole office fit out, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's been um, a lot easier for us, obviously, because, um, you know, having, you know, the less traffic here. But look, we've been still doing what we can for the economy. Uh, the economy. Um, you know, we've had a lot of trades people and, um, uh, you know, people coming in and out and, and buying up things. So we're still doing what we can um, for the economy. But uh, for us, it's always been um, business as usual. And, um, you know, we're still on hand here and working, working for our vendors and our buyers and our landlords and our tenants and doing everything we can to, to just keep things as normal as possible. So what's actually happening now? What is the state of the market in the 2289, the 2291? Tell us a little bit about what's happening. Yeah, okay. So, you know, for the, look, the last quarter that we just had was absolutely magnificent. We sold somewhere in the, oh, I'm not sure if it was like 13 or 14 properties just for that month alone, which is quite great. Um, and then obviously with the whole COVID thing in, in April, look, things obviously changed and um, um, slowed down, as you would expect. And um, and we all felt obviously the change and, you know, no one knew what was going to happen and to, to what extreme. Um, we've still been obviously functioning because we've been allowed to. It's still an essential service, real estate. Um, and um, but what we found in April, it sort of certainly did quiet down. Um, but we still de definitely did do transactions. Okay, obviously no one knew as many as what we we're used to, but we still did some transactions, and we still felt there were buyers and sellers out there that you know we're still prepared to meet. Um, and we're, we're quite fortunate with you know with today and um, with the, with the, you know digital media, we definitely relied on that very heavily. Um, we did use a lot of uh, 3D virtual tours and we found that they did help a lot, especially in qualifying buyers and, um, and not just having unnecessary um, inspections because, you know, it's scary times. You've got to look after everyone's safety. 
Um, but we still were able to do inspections and um, bring some people together, match make some properties. Yeah. Tom, what are you seeing out there right now? Uh, interesting question, Rosie. You know, look, I think uh, Sveta certainly um, summed it up perfectly in terms of the, the changed approach and the, the, the different levels of, um, of activity out there. But I guess um, uh, it probably comes back to one of those old... Um, <laughs> One of those one of those old saying, Craig's, in, it applies so um, uh, well, so relevant to real estate at the moment. That you know, in the market, what we're seeing is three things: there are there are those that are making things happen, uh, the, there are those that are watching things happen, and there there are those that are wondering what happened. So, um, I guess the, you know, the the active buyers, the active investors, are the ones that are going to go out there and keep doing deals, uh, regardless of what's happening. At the end of the day, there's still people that want to sell property. Um, and there, there are still investors that have got the capacity to uh, to buy property, uh, whether they be um, you know, straight out investors or owner occupiers. So, I guess um, chatting offline briefly with with Sveta earlier, I'd, I'd love to, um, I guess, pose a question um, of, of you, Sveta, in terms of that um, sales process and how that's changed. Obviously, you, you've got a, um, a stellar repu reputation in Newcastle as somebody who knows how to get things done. And a big part of that is obviously, you know, negotiating and, and bringing together buyers and sellers. So I'd, lo I'd love to, um, I guess, ask you a question about that. How has that process changed for you with um, with the market being what it is today? So for us, we found, and I and all myself, and I actually prefer this, it was just a lot more personable with buyers again. Because um, you found that obviously when you deal with primarily a lot of open houses, it's not as personable. You know, buyers tend to come straight in and out, and it's, it's, not, it's not anywhere near as much contact as as you know as what you are seeing right now. It's actually been great. It's, it's good old-fashioned customer service, if anything. You get to connect more with buyers. You get to find out realistically what they want. Um, it's just it's just a lot more more open communication between um, us and the buyers and obviously vendors as well. Um, it's just more because it's a one-on-one -on -one approach and that, that's and that's that's the best part of it, I really find. The best part of it is all more one-on-one. -on -one. And when do, things do ease off again, I'm, I'm sure, um, you know, things are going to change again, but it's, 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 it's a valuable thing, definitely. Sure. Yeah, I think we're definitely seeing more qualified buyers um, and and they're ready to to transact. So you you had a, a number of transactions over the um, you know when we're deep into the immersion of the COVID nineteen restrictions, but you're still doing plenty of deals there. Sped um, give us an, an example of, of of something that you did there. Well, um, oh wow, which one? <laughs> so look, um, one of them was um, a prestigious property, and um, we had a, a vendor that obviously you know he, he was open to still selling the property, um, you know, reasonable reasonable seller and understands that, you know, there's going to be still buyers out there, even though buyers are still fairly fairly cautious. But people still want to move, okay? People are still looking at um, up, upsizing or even downsizing. We actually did see quite a lot of people that were doing the whole downsizing where, you know, they'd sell up something, say, 2 to $3 million and... Um, Move down towards say uh, 1.5 to 2 million dollar home just to cash up and be um, be prepared for the next purchase. Um, but yeah, some of the deals, one of them in particular was a, a, a vendor that actually had already purchased earlier, um, still wanted to sell even in throughout the whole COVID. Um, trusted us that we would still do everything we could, do the right thing, and still find um, a buyer that obviously wanted their property and was still prepared to pay a reasonable price in today's conditions. So they're still out there, guys. They definitely are. Look, I've even had um, both. Um, I've had buyers still approach me. They know I have a lot of off-market pipeline sales as well. That um, if we don't already have them online, they still want me to go out there and that's awesome for them. And I've got plenty of those at this moment, and we're still doing that too. So off-market, you've got a bunch of off-market stuff, and I guess for people who sort of want to have a bet each way, that's a pretty good position to be in, right? Yeah, yeah. Look, you've, you've got buyers there, guys, that have still got money and they're cashed up. And, and as a matter of fact, with this whole COVID thing, I know a lot of people that don't necessarily want to leave their money in the bank. <laughs> you know, they, yeah. they know that, you know, the good old fashioned bricks and water. It's always been the safest thing when it comes to your money. And, you know, and, and, and markets can change or fluctuate. Look at the share market, for instance. You know, you've got people there that also sold, I mean, that, uh, you know, lost money in super. Um, and the other thing, too, guys, with the first home buyers market, we've found there's a 
there's really good activity in that as well. Interest rates have been as low as they've been. And also there's a lot of um, buyers that we've, we've actually, well, through speaking, um, have had holidays that they're going to go to, we're going to spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. And that's no longer the case now with it being um, suspended. So they're actually putting it into property. It's so interesting. We had pushed back, you know, further down down the years. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting um, when we talk about the market too. That there's markets within markets, and you're obviously seeing that yeah. yourself right now, Spetta. Where um, we can look at the New South Wales market, or the Australian market, or the world property market, but there's still that person who's living in Merriweather or that person who's living in Adamstown Heights, maybe mm -hmm. in a five bedroom home. The kids have moved out, and they're thinking, "Geez." Now might be a great time to sell and, and, and buy, you know, a townhouse or something like that in a better location. And, and so there's a little bit of, uh, I guess, um, a motivation to sell. You still also got yeah. people deceased estates. You've got people who are having babies and need to, to buy another place. So, you know, it, it's hard to paint the whole market with a single brush, wouldn't you think? Absolutely. Look, I just signed up a property yesterday um, and, um, and the vendor's motivation was actually COVID. Um, because they just thought for them, you know what, life's too short, you never know what's around the corner, so they mm. decided to list their property and move north to Queensland. Um, they've just brought their plans forward by about five years. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, that's what the good agents always see, opportunity in any market, and obviously that's why you're doing so much business. So um, a lot of our, our what viewers on um, Access All Agents, Feta, they love to um, find out, where where the deals are both for an investment perspective or an occupier so um where are you seeing some of the hot deals emerge for our for our, our viewers right now look you're definitely finding this um oh this there's all there's all there's good deals everywhere craig that's the truth it's, it's there's opportunities there's opportunity everywhere um like especially like the you know anything below 700 so there's still some of those um, it just depends what you see as a, as a good deal. That's the truth. Um, yep. Everyone sees that differently. Some people have seen properties um, that they never ever thought that that would be in their price range, and now all of a sudden, you know what? Hello. Yeah. It's now looking at oh, this is this is looking good, and they've now gone out and secured a property that they've always dreamed that they probably never could have had. I've seen that happen as well. And then obviously those people are going to sell, um, whether they sell now or later. Um, yeah, but they're, they're, we, we do see there's still there's still opportunities out there. The world hasn't stopped. We're still going. What are you seeing out there, Tom Haig? Yeah, it's a, it's a great point, Craig. It's out, look, consistently over the last, um, uh, I guess, couple of months now, our advice to all of our investor clients has been if you're not ready to, to act, if you're not ready to, uh, you know, to, to take that leap into property at the moment, at the very least get yourself uh, ready to do so. I think for everybody... Um, and Sveta mentioned it earlier, uh, people view different properties very differently. People view opportunities very differently. Um, so at the end of the day, I think it really comes down to a personal situation as to when you'll feel comfortable to get into the market if you've been thinking about doing it. So what we've, uh, I guess, been trying to help all of our clients do is get ready. So get that pre-approval approval in place, um, get that uh, investment strategy um, really ironed out. And also, I guess one of the really important things to do is to establish a really clear uh, brief for yourself. So even if it's, a, if it's a document that only you have a reference, just to get clear on um, what makes a good opportunity for you. So you can really focus your attention on, um, I guess, identifying some areas that uh, that make sense for you um, and becoming a bit of an area expert. The other, the other thing um, is really to reach out to agents. I think for um, yeah, the work that we do, Craig, as you know, uh, one of the most common things that we hear from our clients is um, that they, they're afraid to actually make contact with agents. You know, I guess we're in a very different market at the moment. Obviously, Sveta mentioned it earlier where there's an opportunity to actually engage directly with agents um, and that, uh, obviously buyers and agents can actually have a, a more meaningful conversation perhaps than when things are a little bit busier. So, I guess for me, um, uh, and I, as, as someone who is one of my, uh, Newcastle's most experienced agents, I'd love um, to hear uh, some tips from Sveta on um, those, those buyers out there that you've dealt with over the years, Sveta, who are the ones that are the most successful buyers, investors, owner occupiers when it comes to, you know, purchasing a home? What, what, are, what are those people doing that's different to, say, the rest of the market who are uh, perhaps a little bit indecisive? 
So the, 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 those type of buyers are the ones that obviously they do the research, they've been through real estate cycles before and they know, you know, they know opportunity buying, um, you know, they basically know you make your value in when you buy a property. You don't make, you don't make the value when you sell, okay? So in times like the COVID, for instance, now, especially in April, how quiet that it was, you would find that those type of buyers are out and about then shopping, looking for something that think, you know what, this is a good deal or it's quite reasonable. They, they just they make they make the most of it and they and they buy and then they hold on to it for whatever reason. But they're not the ones that would generally sit there and fence and wait and wait, wait for hopefully for the market to bottom out. Because the only way you know a market's bottom out guys is when you start to see it go up again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no one has a crystal ball, unfortunately. No one can really tell you how things are going to happen. Like, we're quite lucky at the moment that the government is, you know, putting their hand in and, and helping out. You know, they're, they're doing what they can to, to keep the, the economy going. Um, and, um, like, you know, you can hear the talks now about the, the stamp duty as well, with what they're trying to suggest. So, yeah, the, you know, there's, there's things that um, are, are constantly happening. To, to keep the, the economy going. Yeah, I think some great, great um, analytics there, Sveta. Um, the key takeaways for me are you need to be in a situation where you're agile. You need to be able to jump on deals. You need to be able to engage with your agents, not play the cards close to your chest because, you know, the seller wants to sell, the agent wants to sell, the buyer wants to buy. We're all sort of want, to, want the same outcome at the end. And so, so let's let's sort of make the deal happen. Um, there's there's vendors out there right now. There's sellers that want to take advantage of uh, maybe the slight dip in the market, so they want to sell, and they will probably yeah. be selling in the same market that they're buying. So their mm -hmm. their understanding of maybe taking a, a slight reduction in price compared to the first quarter of this year. Yes. So no matter what the market is, there's always good opportunities to buy. And sell. So it's just interesting how people sort of wait and wait and wait. It's like, well, what are you waiting for? For the That's optimism? Right. Are you waiting for the optimism to return to the market? Because and when it does, yeah. <laughs> and then you're going to be back with everyone again. So it, it, exactly. in April, I feel it was a, a good time to be buying. Yeah. And yeah. as opposed to now in May, well, who knows? We still don't know. But since they've eased the restrictions from open houses again, we have noticed a new flutter. And I'm, yeah. I'm sure if you speak to any real estate agent, they'll probably say the same. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely seen a um, yeah. a, a, re, a renewal of enthusiasm for the market. People Absolutely. reaching out, asking where the, where the good deals are. And I say, well, that's really easy. Just watch this uh, video podcast, and we'll have all our <laughs> all our favourite <laughs> agents on. So, um, Sveta, for for those people who are, are looking to to, to sell, um, perhaps looking to buy, what's the best way they can get in contact with you? Oh, look, they can contact me, my mobile number, as you can see on the screen there, 0411 My office is located at 1 slash 88 Park Avenue, Katara, opposite Westfield, where the dental centre and um, uh, the, the vets and all that. F45. <laughs> yeah, F45 <laughs> was there, but they've now gone. I've got a great uh, conveyancer and lawyer next to me. Oh, well, yeah. Though. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and also you can also um, contact us um, via email as well. Um, yeah, so, yeah, any of those, or you could just walk straight in. We're here. We're still open. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for joining us on Access All Agents, Sveta Kolorowski from Sveta Properties, the area expert not only in the 2289, but I think you could almost qualify for 2291 area expert these days with um, some fantastic <laughs> results there. So uh, I think people are still talking about Buchanan Street. So uh, oh, well done. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. Well, we've got some other exciting things <laughs> too. I'll mark that perhaps Sveta. So uh, <laughs> you just, just have to call to find out. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. Well, nothing surprised me that you've always got some great stuff in the pipeline well, you, there. You, well, we sold Helen Street together, remember, as well. Yeah, that was a, a remarkable yeah. result. Um, yeah. and, and now, like, you know, those properties don't even come up on a corner within walking distance to a beach. Mm. It's like, mm. it's amazing. So, uh, yeah. thank you very much. Also, Tom Haig investment analysis with Capital Property Newcastle and my trusted colleague. I had a great chat today, guys. Thank you so much and um, can't wait to get together again and talk more about what's happening, the backstage 
guide to the real estate market with access all agents. Bye for now. Thanks, Rosie. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Veda. Bye.